The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the Ray and Pass Sorting Webinar in TracePro. Today, your presenter will be Dave Jacobson, our Senior Application Engineer from Lambda Research Corporation, and I'm your moderator, Mike Govan, and I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Lambda Research. Today's format is a 25 to 30 minute presentation followed by our standard question and answer session. You'll find that the question box for this particular webinar is on your GoToMeeting panel. And please submit your questions anytime using that question box in the GoToWebinar control panel as you see on the right here. You just enter in that one section that says enter a question for staff that you see highlighted in red. Okay, Mike, if you want, I will take over here then. This is this is Dave. Um, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar. Uh, as Mike mentioned, as we're going along, please feel free to submit questions at any point, uh, and we'll address all questions at the end of the webinar. And I'll try to remember to remind everybody as we're going along here. Uh, before we get started, I uh, just want to let you know about a few additional resources um, in addition to today's webinar. Uh, we have all of our past webinars on our website at the, on the webinars page. We also have Trace Pro tutorial videos, uh, as well as printed tutorials that you can download and go through step by step. And there's information on our upcoming Trace Pro training classes there as well. Uh, relating to the upcoming training classes, our next classes here, uh, our next training classes, we have five days of training coming up in Jena, Germany. Uh, the first two days, March 6th and 7th, Monday and Tuesday, will be an introduction to TracePro. Then we're going to do a two-day course on optimization with TracePro. And then we're going to offer the stray light analysis using TracePro class in uh, there as well. And it's been a little while since we've, we've offered the stray light class in Europe. So if there's anybody that's interested in learning how to use TracePro for stray light analysis, uh, please touch base with us on that, and we'll be happy to get you signed up for that class. Uh, we'll also be having training classes here in Littleton at our headquarters, Littleton, Massachusetts, uh, the week of April uh, 11th. So April 11th and 12th, Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be doing an introduction to TracePro. And then on the Thursday and Friday of that week, we'll be doing a two-day class on optimization with TracePro. And if anybody's interested in any of these uh, training classes, please uh, contact us here. And also, we offer custom on-site training at any time. So if you're interested in having one of us come out to your site and conduct a training class, please feel free to contact us and we can work with you on that as well. Some other quick notes before we get started. Uh, just the latest releases of TracePro and Raviz. Uh, TracePro 780 was released October 1st. Uh, as was uh, the official release of Raviz, Raviz 7.8.0. Uh, and anybody with current maintenance and support agreements can download these on our website. So let's get into the, today's webinar. As Mike mentioned, uh, the webinar today is going to be on the Ray and Path Sorting features in TracePro. Our agenda will be, we're going to start off by looking at what is Ray and Path Sorting and how are they different. Uh, we'll look at the options for ray sorting in TracePro. Then we'll talk about the path sort table. Uh, we'll also look at defining path sort filters. This is a new feature in TracePro 7.8. Uh, we'll also wrap up with a discussion on ray and path sorting uses, including stray light analysis. And then we'll, we'll finish up with our question and answer session. And once again, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them into that question box on the control panel. The example we're going to look at today, and we'll see this as we go through both the ray and path sorting options, is just a simple little cross Zerny Turner spectrometer. And some of the key features in this, we have a, a case with a, a black or painted type finish, anodized finish. We have a slit that lets the light in, narrow slit, a collimating mirror, 
a grating to split the light up into its component wavelengths, a focusing mirror, and then a detector. And I'll use this because this model gives us a lot of different options for different paths and ray sorting features. So we'll be, we'll be seeing this as we go along. Okay, so the question could be, well, what is ray and path sorting? And here's sort of what they are and some of the differences. Um, the ray and path sorting tools, they're located in the analysis menu in TracePro. And they can be used to display a subset of the complete ray trace results. Uh, ray, ray sorting allows you to show all rays that meet a specified criteria and I'll get more into that as we go along. Whereas path sorting shows rays that follow a discrete path to a selected surface. The ray and path sorting tools are available in all versions of TracePro. Although some of the features for ray sorting, such as single and multiple bulk scatter and diffraction, uh, require TracePro standard or expert. So the basic tools are there, just some of the features require the higher versions of TracePro. And lastly here, the, the ray and path sorting tools can also be applied to the irradiance illuminance maps. And I'll show you that uh, sort of right at the end of the webinar. So here's a, a graphical difference between the two. Uh, ray sorting here on the left shows all rays that meet a specified criteria, such as hitting a selected surface, rays of a specific wavelength, or a certain interaction type. In this case, we're looking at rays that are hitting a specific surface and are of a certain wavelength. Path sorting shows you all the rays that follow a discrete path to reach a selected surface. So all of these rays shown here on this uh, screenshot are following the same path to get to this, in this case, the selected surface of the detector right here. And again, we'll, we'll get more in depth on both of these as we go along. Let's start out with ray sorting. And ray sorting has been in TracePro for a long time. And it, it, it's had new features added as we go along. But it's a tool that I think not a lot of people use. And what ray sorting does is it allows for sorting of rays based on a specified criteria. And you can find this in the analysis menu. So you can just go analysis, ray sorting. And that opens up the ray sorting dialog box we see here. The first type of sorting you can do is the type of sort you'd like. And we can sort for selected surface, specular rays, single surface scatter, multiple surface scatter, single bulk scatter, multiple bulk scatter, single diffraction or multiple diffraction. And these are all available here right in this sort type drop down. So just click the drop down arrow, pick the type of sort you'd like to do, and then click update. There's additional sorting options. You could sort by source. So if you had five different LEDs as sources in your model, they'd all show up here in the sources drop down. And then you could pick which, which rays do you want to see from which source. You can also sort by wavelength. Uh, the spectrometer example we have here has wavelengths of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8 microns. So we could pick one of those to sort on. You can also display a percentage of starting rays. And this is a great tool for just reducing the number of rays you see on the screen. So you can start to make more sense of what's happening. And you can also sort by a scale of flux values. So if you want to see only rays that have between 50 and 100% of the initial flux, you could do that here with this flux display range. And anytime you make a change, just click update, and it'll update the ray display. So here's some examples of ray sorting. And here's the initial ray trace. And again, the light's coming into the spectrometer. There's a grid source here going through the slit. And as you can see here, this, it's not usable for analysis. We really have no idea what's happening with these rays. So first one I could try is sort by selected surface. And to do this, I opened up my detector object here. 
selected the surface that I'd named detector, was the front face of the detector, and then opened up ray sorting, analysis ray sorting, and chose selected surface for the race for the sort type, clicked update. And here are the rays hitting that particular surface. We can see our specular rays here, these four main focused points, but we can also see scattered light and stray light as well. We could change the sort type to show um, rays of a given wavelength. In this case, it's showing all rays with a 0.4 micron wavelength. So again, not the cleanest image, but we could further refine that. We could say, show the rays that are hitting the selected surface, in this case the detec detector, but also have a wavelength of 0.4 microns. So it would just be a simple matter, select the detector surface, go up to analysis, ray sorting, set the sort type to be selected surface, set the wavelength to be 0.4, and all the wavelengths in the model would be available in the drop-down menu here. So you don't have to remember what wavelengths are being used, and then click update. So now in this case, we're seeing, here's our, our first order for the light, Gradings produce multiple orders. So the second order for this 0.4 microns also shows up here on the detector further out. So if we're doing, if we were doing a spectrometer design like this, we'd have to look at putting in a filter to block that light so it doesn't produce a duplicate reading and throw the results off. So another way we could look at here is we could use ray sorting to see where do we need to place a second order filter. We could also look at a percentage of starting rays. In this case, this is showing just a half a percent of the rays that started. And we just enter that here, percentage of starting rays, 0 0.5, click update. It'll show you that. You can also sort for surface interaction type. Here's a sort being done on just specular rays. So we're showing just the specular rays that are hitting this particular surface. We could look, if we want to get into like stray light, we could start looking at scattered rays. Oh, here's rays that are hitting that surface, this detector surface, that are single scatter. So they're being scattered off one surface to get there. Very similar, but this is multiple scatter now. I'm just changing the sort type here and clicking update after each time. Uh, when, when you get down to multiple surface scatter, a lot of times what you have to do is lower the flux threshold. And, and the flux threshold, for people who are not familiar with it in TracePro, that's the point where TracePro stops keeping track of the rays. Uh, the default setting is 0 0.05, which is 5%. Uh, and that means that once a ray drops below 5% of its initial value for flux or power, the program stops keeping track of it. And you can lower that. And many times, especially when you start getting into things like stray light analysis, it's crucial to lower that flux threshold. So you're looking at the lower and lower flux rays, which are really what your stray light typically is. Uh, we could also look at, here's another one, range of flux values. And this is only showing, in this case, it's a little small here to see in the corner, but it's showing flux from 0 to 0 0.1, or from 0 to 10% of the initial value. And we see there's a lot of light scattering around hitting this detector that has lower flux values, but it could contribute to a problem in an actual design. Okay, so as you can see, we, we can use that ray sorting to sort based on certain criteria. And it's going to show all the rays that meet that criteria, whether it's wavelength or specular reflection or selected surface. The path sort table is a little bit different. And the path sort table is a somewhat newer feature in TracePro. It was added in a, a couple years ago. Uh, we had always had a, a text format for the path sort table. And then recently we added in graphical path sorting as well. So path sorting allows for sorting rays by the paths they take to a selected surface. 
and the path has to be identical for each ray for it to be included in that path. And as many different paths as you have, well, that's the, the number of lines you'd wind up having in the path sort table. And this is found like ray sorting. It's in the analysis menu, analysis path sort. And once again, it's a very similar procedure. Select the surface where you want to see the rays that are where they're going to. Go to analysis, path sort, and it'll open up the path sort table. And it lists all the rays by the paths they take to get to that selected surface. And here we can see this, this list here is probably close to 100 different paths. Uh, by default, it sorts as the percentage of total for the, the highest flux onto that path or onto that selected surface. So these first four paths, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 microns, are the specular rays, the rays that are actually going and getting there the way we want them to. And the, pa the table itself shows source, wavelength, number of rays, absorbed flux, percentage of total, path type, and number of intercepts. And you can sort these columns by just clicking on the headers here. So we could absor uh, sort by absorbed flux. If we want to see the lowest flux first and the highest flux at the end of the table, we could sort the table that way. If you click on the little plus sign here, that's next to the, actually it's a double click on the little plus sign, it expands it. And you can see in tabular format what each ray in that path is doing. So example, this 0.4 micron, it's emitted. It has a specular reflection from the collimating mirror uh, on the mirror surface, specular reflection from the grating surface of the grating, specular reflection, excuse me, from the mirror surface of the focusing mirror, specular transmission of one surface of the window, specular transmission of another surface of the window, and then it hits the detector, which was our selected surface. If we select another one here, here's a different path. This was the fifth path. Again, we see we have specular reflection, specular reflection, specular reflection off the collimating mirror. And then we have some random reflections off the slit and transmission through the, the window. And I'll show you graphically these paths here in a few seconds. And here's another path further down. It has much lower flux, much less rays. But now it's a mixture of specular and random reflections from different uh, parts here. Once you have the path sort table open, if you go back up to the analysis menu and select display selected paths, it's going to show the path you have selected in the path sort table graphically. So you can see the rays right on the screen. So here's that first path selected. This was 0.4 micron light. We see that the rays that are follow that path here. And again, this is the second order due to the fact this grading is defined as having two orders. So here's the, the actual position where we want the light, 0.4 micron. And here's the second order appearing up here around 0.8, where 0.8 microns would be. So we'd want to filter that out. If I pick a different path, we see now here's light that's coming in. It's coming in here, reflecting off this mirror, reflecting off the, the grating, coming back, and actually coming back, hitting the slit, and then being scattered. So there's some light coming back through the system. This is actually fairly high in the path sort table. It's the fifth one. So this would be a a case where we'd want to look at possibly stray light from this and how do we mitigate that. Do we put a coating down here to block this or absorb this scattered reflection? Going further down the table here is just another path where we're seeing random reflections off the case and different parts of the some of the other objects getting to that. So as you would scroll down this list you'd just see the different paths showing up here. Starting with TracePro 
we've added in the capability to define what's called path sort filters. As I mentioned, this is in, in 7.8, and 7.8 is the current release of TracePro. Uh, there's also a 7.8.1 early access release that you can download off of our website. It has a few bug fixes in it. Um, but 7.8 adds the ability to apply filters to the path sort table to look for specific path, va uh, path types. And it's right up here. It says filter editor lets us do that. So the steps, the excuse me, the steps for defining a path sort filter. First, click the file editor box here. Once you've opened up the, the path sort table, click file editor, and that'll open up the path sort filter editor here. To define a new path sort filter, spelling error, I gotta fix that. Uh, to define a new path sort filter, click add filter and then enter a name for the filter, and then click OK. So here we clicked Add Filter. I gave it a name called Webinar Example, then clicked OK. The Path Sort Filter Editor then allows you to define objects, surfaces, surface intercept types, and an operator for the filter. And to go through those one by one, this column here, object group, there's a drop down arrow and it lists all the objects and groups in the current TracePro model. So we can pick the one we want to use. For example, if I picked collimating mirror. Once I've done that, I can then go to the surface drop down tab and it's going to list the surface for the selected object or group. So all the surfaces, in this case, that are part of the collimating mirror are shown here in this drop-down. So I could look for light hitting a specific surface. I can also choose the intercept type. What, what type of, of interaction with that surface do I want to see in the path sort filter? And the available intercept types are miss, any specular reflection, specular transmission, random reflection, random transmission, importance reflection, importance transmission, random diffraction reflection, random diffracted importance re <laughs> diffracted reflection, random diffraction transmission, importance diffraction transmission, uh, random volume scatter, importance volume flux, a grin gradient index transmission, and a reptile transmission. So you could pick different types of interactions. And then lastly, when you, oh, sorry, you can also add multiple rows. So for example, I don't, if I want to see light hitting multiple surfaces, I can click add row. If I wanted to delete a row, it's very simple as well. Select the row, click delete row. And when you have multiple rows in the path sort filter, you can apply operators. So in this case, our choices are and or or. And for example, in this one here, we're looking for specular reflection from the collimating mirror, mirror surface, and a random reflection from the case and any surface of the case. And that's what I pretty much just said there is that the following filter example will show ray paths that have a specular reflection from the mirror surface of the collimating mirror, our first line here, and a random reflection from any surface of the case, right there. Once you've defined the filter, click the X up in the upper right hand corner to close the path sort filter editor. And the path sort filters are saved with the TracePro model. So when I save this TracePro model, any path sort filters I've defined are saved as part of that model. And they'll be available in the future if I open it up again. Once you've defined a path sort filter, you can also select it to apply to the table just by clicking the drop down here for select filters 
and then clicking on the one that you want and then clicking somewhere else to accept the selection. And then you can click apply. So here's some examples from the filtered path sort table. This was just one here. And again, this was, remember, this path was specular reflection from the mirror surface of the collimating mirror and random reflection from any surface of the case. So here's this path sort table. I think it was somewhere around 75 different paths. But here's an, an example. We see light coming in. It's reflecting. It's doing a specular reflection here from the collimating mirror up to the grating down here, hits the case, scatters back off the case back here, and this you know follows this path. And if I expanded it, it would show it as well the, in text format, tabular format. Just another example where now we're scattering off this back surface here, and we've got stray light up onto the, the detector. And just a, a third example. And I'm just going through. You can just click on any of these ones and, and see the, the rays for that particular path. Uh, you can define more complex filters. You're not limited to just two lines. Uh, for example, the following filter shows ray paths that have a specular reflection from the collimating mirror, grading, focusing mirror, and any type of reflection from the slit. So we're looking at uh, specular reflections from the focusing mirror, grading, and collimating mirror, and any type of reflection from the slit. They're all ands here. And there's an example showing that light coming in, scattering off, eventually scattering off the slit and back to the detector. Uh, the another example, the following filter shows ray paths that have either a specular or random reflection from the focusing mirror. So here's the case of looking at just different types of intercepts, but for the same surface. And then selecting through that path sort table a couple different options. There's the specular path, but there's a, a random reflection path getting back to the detector. Okay. So as you can see, there, there's a lot of things you can do with those ray and path sort tables. And they, they give you a lot of flexibility, especially in organizing down and getting your data into a usable format, where you can start to make some sense of the results. So just to sort of start wrapping up here, just some of the ray and path sorting uses. Okay. Uh, some of the, the basic uses that sort of pop to mind right away, uh, simplifying ray trace results, uh, reducing the number of rays shown on a screen, uh, identifying anomalous ray paths, uh, stray light analysis is probably the biggest one, and you can also use these with the irradiance and illuminance maps, and I'll show you some examples of that uh, right to the end of this section. So. This is the same slide I showed back earlier in the webinar, but here's the initial ray trace results. And this wasn't a lot of rays. I think it was 100,000 rays. But you can see it's not usable. You can't see anything here, what's happening. If anybody doesn't remember or, or doesn't know what the, the colors of the rays can also denote the flux in TracePro. In this case, we're set. I think my ray, my ray colors are set to wavelengths, though. Okay, so if we want to start just cleaning up the screen, first thing we could do is, say, do a, a ray sorting for this detector surface and just showing specular rays. Because really, these are the rays we're interested in. This is our main signal getting to our detector. We could look at specular of a particular wavelength. So again, here's the 0.2 micron, but because of the grading produces multiple orders, we actually have that showing up here again out at where 0.4 microns would be. So we need to filter that out. If we're doing an actual spectrometer that's covering this range, in this case from about 0.2 to 1 micron, we'd need to apply a filter that would block that light. Otherwise, we'd get false readings. 
You can also use it to show anomalous ray paths. For example, here's unwanted reflections from the slit. And this is light going back through the system, hitting on the edge of the slit, but then being seen and hitting the detector. So in this case, we'd probably want to put a coating on this so that we can start to, to mitigate these rays so we're not getting as much scatter and stray light to the surface. Uh, here's another example. And we're looking now at light scattered to the detector from the collimating mirror. And in a case like this, if we want to improve this, we'd most likely have to improve the mirror coating. So if we wanted to evaluate as we put a more and more specular coating on the mirror, we polish the mirror smoother, put a more specular coating on it, can we reduce this scatter? Uh, this ties back into having good property definitions as well. But this could be a major source here because there's no, no real way to baffle this. So we'd want to look at improving the mirror coating. Uh, very similar, you know, this is stray light. This is light scattered, it's unwanted light. We could also look here using path sorting, and this shows light scattered to the detector from the case of the spectrometer. So depending on what type of finish we have put on this case, is it a painted black, is it an anodized black? Um, we could look at the, at the contribution of light to the detector from light scattering off the case. And you can see the, the path here is fairly complex. So light's coming in here, hitting the, the focusing mirror, hitting the grating, hitting the collimating mirror, come back up here. There's a reflection off the window in front of the detector, comes back here, hits this mirror, hits the case, and then goes back through there again. So it's a fairly complex path. And without something like a path sort filter uh, or the path sort table, it'd be difficult to really figure out where this light is coming from and where do you need to apply measures to mitigate that light. Now as I mentioned earlier, the ray and path sorting tables can also be used in conjunction with the irradiance and illuminance maps in TracePro. To use ray sorting with an irradiance and illuminance map, open up the irradiance and illuminance map, make it the active window, just click in it, and then go to Analysis, Ray Sorting. And the ray sorting selections can then be applied in the same manner as for a graphical ray sorting. So you could look at, say for example, rays of a specific wavelength or rays from a specific source. Uh, to use path sorting in the irradiance illuminance map together, open up the path sort table, uh, select a particular path, then go to Analysis, Display Selected Paths. So pick the path you want to see and go to Display Selected Paths to show it graphically. And then open the Irradiance or Illuminance map. And the Irradiance or Illuminance map at that case will be for that selected path. And as you go and select different paths, you'll see it'll change and update the Irradiance and Illuminance maps. As I just said, you select a different path, it updates the map. So here's ray sorting with the irradiance illuminance map. And in this case, we're sorting for wavelength, light with a wavelength of 0.2 microns. So we can see here, here's our first order, and here's our second order from the grading. This is the one we ideally want to filter out, because otherwise it's going to show up here and it's going to produce anomalous results. Here's the irradiance maps irradiance illuminance map for a selected path. So very similar to the screenshot I showed a few slides ago where we have scatter off of this mirror here right to the detector. Well, we pick that path in the path sort table, open up the irradiance or illuminance map, and we can see the distribution of light on that surface for the rays following that particular path. Okay, so do a quick summary. Uh, while I'm doing this, I'll put out the call again for questions. If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to type them into the question and answer panel, and we'll address those shortly. So TracePro features powerful and easy-to-use ray and path sorting tools. Uh, these allow you 
to simplify the ray display for better clarity and understanding. You can sort rays based on criteria such as surface interaction type, wavelength, percentage of starting rays, and so on. Uh, you can sort rays based on the path they take to get to a selected surface. Uh, in addition to graphically and tabularly showing the results, you can also use the irradiance and illuminance maps to see the, the lighting pattern produced by those rays. And as I've mentioned, and you can probably see, that these are really excellent tools for stray light analysis. Sort of, you know, very um, important and essential tools for doing stray light analysis. Uh, if anybody's looking for more information or would like to sign up for one of our free 30-day trials, uh, please visit us here at www.lambdares.com. Uh, as well, here on the bottom, our contact information for our phone and email. Email is sales at lambdares.com. I should also note we are recording this webinar, and we will have a recording uh, as well as the slides available on our website probably within the next 24 hours or so. So you'll be able to go to the, the webinar section of our website and download this webinar for future reference. So with that, I'm going to have Mike come back on. We're going to open it up for any questions and answers. And I see we already have a couple questions. Great, Dave. Thank you very much for putting that together for us. And I, I hope that uh, we can have a few good questions here. And it looks like we have about three of them. Uh, the first one is from uh, Sridhar. He would like to know, can filters be saved as, separate, as a separate database and used for repeated work? Not that I know of. I believe that they're saved with the Trace Pro model. Uh, we could certainly add a feature request in to, to possibly add that capability in the future. But at this point, it, they're going to be limited to, um, to the model they're created in. I'll write a note right now to, to add that as a feature request. Dave, we've got a second question here. Uh, the person is new to TracePro. Can TracePro simulate and then sort rays traveling down a fiber waveguide? It can. Um, but you could very much do the same thing. Select, a de say, a detector at the, that's at the output of the waveguide or the, the fiber and do a path sort table and the rays getting to that surface. The problem is going to be is that the path sort table may be extremely large because every different path array takes to get through that uh, fiber is going to come up as a separate path. But there's no reason you, know, you can't do it. And depending on, you know, on a complex you know, fiber that has multiple bands and has some length to it and small diameter, there, there could be hundreds or thousands of, of possible paths rays could take. And really, I mean, every time if the ray bounces once, it's one path. If it bounces twice, it's a different path. Bounces three times and so forth. So it's, it's possible, and it, it is very easy to do. You just follow the same steps we, we showed in the webinar. Run the ray trace, select your target surface, go to analysis, path sort table, and it'll show that. And finally, we have a last question. Uh, oh, actually, we've got a couple more here. Yep. Um, is there a way we could use this to analyze interference patterns? Uh, no, because TracePro does not model diffraction. Um, we model, like an example like this where we're using a grading, it models the effect of the diffraction. It, in this case, it's using the grading equation and the groove spacing on the grading to, to model what happens. But we're not, we can't actually produce uh, diffraction or interference patterns in TracePro. Our next question is, can TracePro simulate diffraction from a rotationally, symmetry, uh, rotationally symmetric diffractive lens rather than just a diffraction grating? Most likely not. Again, for that same thing, we're not, act, we're not modeling the actual diffraction. We're modeling, you know, the, the two, thing, two bits of diffraction we can model in TracePro are typically going to be diffraction from a grating where we're defining and using the, the grading equation. And we can also do edge or aperture diffraction, where there's a, a mathematical calculation going on in the background that's calculating the spreading due to that edge diffraction. 
So in terms of doing a, you know, a diffractive lens, uh, I don't think we'd really be able to do that. No, I agree there. And our last question, Dave, is it possible to sort rays that follow a range of paths? You can, you, well, you could, if you set the filter up right, I think you could do that. But the one caveat at this point is the rays all have to be going and ending at the same surface. Uh, so you, if you had two detectors, you can't use the, de the path sort table at this point to say show rays that hit both detector one, you know, and take a different path that hit detector two. You have to have the same ending surface for both for all rays. So I think that may be where that question might have been headed. Isn't it also possible, Dave, that we could select a, a, a series of paths in the path sort table and those would be shown up visually and you could also see the contribution from the detector? I believe so, yes. You could select multiple paths, I believe, and show the, the results. Okay, great. Um, I think that's just about all we have time for today, except um, unless you want to take one more. Yeah, there's a couple more that popped in. We've still got a couple minutes. There, there was one quick one I saw that can we, can we animate the ray travel? Um, no, you can't animate ray travel in Trace Pro. Um, the rays are just drawn as, as objects, so we, we can't animate the path through, a, through an object. Uh, so the next question is, in the example shown, can path sorting be used to show all second order diffraction? You would probably, to do that, um, the way I would look at that is I would probably use a flux sort um, for a ray sorting. Basically say, show me specular rays, but also show me rays that are only, say, between 0 and 10% of the initial flux. That way you're you're filtering out the, the first order light and you're just seeing the second order. Uh, there's no way to, to specifically say just show me um, second order rays. And finally, uh, it looks like our last question at this time, can light be sorted within a single component, say within a prism? Yes, you could just select the, the specific surface because usually what you're doing is you're sorting on rays that are hitting a certain surface. So in that model, just select the surface and do either ray or path sorting based on that surface. So yes. So I think we're, we've exhausted our yeah. number of questions. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll just put you know, one last quick call for questions, but as I mentioned earlier, we are recording this webinar, so we'll have a copy of it up on the website within 24 hours. Uh, as well as all of our previous webinars are also available there on different topics. Um, so with that, I guess I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's session. Uh, this will most likely be our last webinar for this year, but you know we look forward to seeing everybody in January for our next webinar. We did have one more quick question. Could rays be based on a color shift? Um, you'd have to base. You'd have to do the rays ray sorting based on wavelength in a case like that. So you could sort by wavelength, and you'd probably be, in that case, really the only thing in Trace Pro that's going to shift the color is a fluorescence property. So you'd have to shift and sort on basically one of the wavelengths for the fluorescent emission. And we have one more, Dave. If you yeah. got a second, uh, also can rays be based on a phase shift? Uh, no, we do not have an option to sort based on phase shift, because TracePro really does not track the phase or report on the phase of the rays beyond, like, say, the polarization map. So we don't have a capability of tracking on phase shift at this point. Well, I think that's about it, Dave. Okay. I think we can wrap it up. Sounds good. Some very good questions today. Yes, we did. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mike, for moderating today. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. And uh, I think with that, we can end the webinar, if you agree, Mike? Yes, definitely. Okay. Okay, thanks again, all, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.